Hey everyone, it's Angus here. Um, I wanted to make a video to show you how you can screen for the best stocks, not only in a you know one particular market like the US, but how you can actually screen for and trade stocks globally um, with TradingView, which is an incredibly powerful thing. Um, I, I hadn't realized that this functionality existed, so I don't know if it's something that's only been added in the last few days or if it's been around for weeks or months. Um, but I thought you can only ever screen for one market at a time. And so, you know, I find this quite exciting. It's um, just, as I said, just incredibly powerful. And so I just want to show you how you might be able to, um, you know, not only pick the best stocks from, you know, one market that meets your setup, but how you might be able to trade, you know, hundreds of exchanges around the world, which is, um, you know, quite interesting. And that's, you know, what I do. So um, without further ado, so click on the stock screener and how you've got it set up is up to you. And I've always thought that I could just select from say the US market. You can see I've got the US market selected and I've got, you know, 12,000 stocks that I can then go through and filter and, you know, manipulate to, you know, meet my particular criteria, you know, to find a you know list of, you know, stocks that I want to trade. But what I've discovered is if I click on this markets here, and, you know, I live in Australia, so I always want to have a look at what the Australian stocks are doing as well as the US. And if I hold down my control key and click Australia, you can now see that it's changed to 14,000 stocks instead of the original 12,000, because Australia has, you know, roughly 2,000 stocks in our exchange. If I close it, you can see it a little bit better. So I've now got 14,000 stocks. And to prove it, um, if I give myself a little bit more space and I click on the little three dots here and I type in exchange, see if I click that now I've got the exchange that I want to trade and so let's say if I sort this by yearly performance and you can see here now I've got you know OTC which is you know your sort of you know one of your US you know basically penny stock exchanges I've got the ASX I've got the NASDAQ um, you know I've, I've got a whole bunch of options now that are available to me so I can now directly compare Australian and US stocks that best meet my setup. Um, if I want to ever filter any out, I can just go through here and I could, you know, say select all. And if I don't want to trade these penny stocks, you know, on this particular exchange, I can, you know, just leave it deselected. And so that then gives me just the markets or the, just the exchanges that I want to trade. Um, and so it's really sort of a powerful thing. And just to show you, just to explain a little bit more, um, I use interactive brokers. You know, it's not an endorsement for interactive brokers, but if, you're, if your broker allows you to trade multiple exchanges, and this gets quite interesting. So just to show you, you know, how powerful it can get, if I click on trading and I go down to exchange listings, you can see on interactive brokers, um, you can trade more than 135 exchanges around the world. And so what does that mean? If I click on learn more, it means that I can basically trade every, you know, every stock market globally, just about depending on where you live, you know, you'll have different options to be able to trade different exchanges. But I think I can, you know, as an Australian, I think I can trade maybe 35 exchanges. Um, so you've got the United States, you know, you look for stocks, you know, you've got all the different you know, exchanges under there. If you go down, you've got Canada. So again, you've got all the different, you know, sort of stock exchanges through Canada that you can trade, you know, Toronto, um, whatever else. You've got Mexico if you want to trade Mexico. So again, you've got Mexico stocks that you can trade. Um, if I go back up here, I can trade Europe. So I can trade things like London, Germany, Belgium, you know, a whole bunch, you know, Austria, Pez, Belgium, Estonia, France, Germany. You know, so, you know, being able to buy Mercedes on the German exchanges, you know, a bit of a fun thing. Um, Hungary, Israel, Italy, Latvia, Lithuania, you know, anything that's got stock. Sometimes they might only be options or something else. But, you know, again, you can just trade a, a massive amount of um, uh, exchanges in there for all their stocks. You know, Australia, ASX, um, you know, GX, Hong Kong, I like to trade. India, I, I can't access it. Like, I think you've got to be a um, an Indian national to be able to trade the Indian exchanges, but again, you can certainly trade it through Interactive Brokers. So I do trade Japan, Singapore, South Korea. Um, so it's just 
you know, I said it's it's impressive, you know, how many different um, exchanges you can trade through someone like Interactive Brokers. So if we go back here and we go back to our um, little globe here, I'm going to have a look through these and I'm going to say, well, you know, I might add Sweden. I'm, uh, let's go, no. What's happening here? No. It's got to catch up. So I'm going to click on that. So I've got the US, I've got Canada, um, I've got Sweden. You can see over here, it's, it'll add them. So I don't know if you can see them on the video, but I'm up to 24,000 stocks now. Um, I can add London, um, Israel, you know, they're good for some of their little, you know, IT type stocks. Um, I've got Australia. I like to trade China. I like to trade Hong Kong. Um, I like to trade Japan. And Taiwan, of course, has got, you know, some great car companies and, you know, chip companies and whatever else. So go back up here and I'm going to click close. And so I've now got 45,000 stocks, which is just a crazy number of stocks to, you know, be able to filter through and pick the best ones globally. So I'm going to click exchange. That's what I was thinking about before. Put exchange back in. Now I'm just going to do a bit of a quality check. So I'm going to say filter out any that don't have greater than 100,000 volume, you know, just to, you know, get rid of some of those little penny stocks or thinly traded stocks. So I'm back down from 40,000 down to 20,000. Um, and I might say only show me stocks where they're up, uh, let's say above 100% over the course of a year to try and find the, you know, stronger stocks that are, you know, dominating on their exchange or their market. Um, so it's 100, and so I'm now down to, you know, 2,432. And you can see, you know, if you sort through, you know, some of these are Chinese stocks. Most of those are Chinese stocks. Why are they all Chinese stocks? What's going on? Oh, no, here we go. Here's some London, Hong Kong. Well, I don't want the one minute. I want to go back to the daily. I didn't know that this option existed either, so I'm going to go back to native. I'm going to go to market currency. You can see here, this is what the local currency is. Let me sort by this. All right, here we go. So before I must have had it sorted by exchange. So you can see if I start at the top, you know, this is one of these crazy OTC stocks. Um, you know, it's gone through the roof. Um, but, you know, you might filter that out. But you can start to see here, you know, ASX, Hong Kong, London, NASDAQ, you know, again, OTCs. So you can see through here, you've now got the ability to pick the best stocks that meet your setup worldwide, which is just, you know, phenomenal to be able to have that ability. So there's 2,400 stocks. And so you can either go through here and you can start to say, well, you know, show me stocks with their monthly performance, three monthly performance meets a certain criteria. Um, you could say only show me stocks where they've got a positive EBITDA. Um, that's assuming that they've reported, you know, that they do report an EBITDA. So I'm down to 861. I'm guessing that might have wiped out some of my um, Chinese stocks because I don't think they report a lot of their financials. They might not, you know, they might not have EBITDA as a measure. So let me clear that one back out. But what I might do, again, just for the fun of it, um, you know, a lot of people like the MACD just as an example. So I might say, get rid of that one, get rid of that one, get rid of volume, make my MACD a bit bigger. And what I'm going to do is try and find stocks that might be about to turn bullish, you know, where the um, MACD is crossing above its, you know, signal. So, the, you know, the fast moving average is crossing up through the slow moving average to sort of indicate a, you know, a bit of a bullish turnaround. So let me go here and I'm going to add MACD. 
I'm going to add the MACD level. Doesn't matter which one you add, you've just got to in your head work out you know, through trial and error sometimes, you know, which, which signal you want to get. So um, I'm going to go MACD crossing up, uh, MACD level crossing up above my MACD signal. And let's see if I've guessed the right one. So let me have a look at lit F. And so see how the MACD, which is the blue line, is crossing a, yeah, it's, it hasn't crossed, but it's sort of above my signal line. And so that's sort of a more bullish signal. See how it's sort of momentum was fading on the histogram, fading, fading, fading. You've got a sort of strong green color again. And so hopefully that might build. Let's see if we can find a better example. Right. Because there are going to be all these ones where it's crossing. So here's a, here's a more obvious one. So see how it's crossed and it's going up. So you'd say that that's probably a bullish signal. Um, yeah, on, on that MACD. So let me click that and make it one year just so you can see a bigger picture. Well, it's not, not quite so easy to see there, but um, LXU. Yeah, so that one there, you know, again, just a nice cross. So you can see it's been sort of, you know, in a bearish sort of territory. And, you know, we've now got a cross of that signal line, green bar there. You know, the stock went up, you know, what was that, 8% yesterday, LSB. And so, you know, I might look at that and think, well, that's an interesting stock, you know, that's an interesting setup. So what I'll do is I'll give myself a little bit more room. I'll open up this and I'll go um, create a new list and we'll call it um, Global MACD Cross. Go save. And I can just hit Alt W and it automatically, you know, adds it and bookmarks it for me. Or I can right click and I can go add to watch list. Or down here I could right click and go add to watch list. So there's you know lots of different ways you can add it. And so that one there at the moment, you know, might be worth looking at. You know, said so I, I don't know, you know, I might, you know, look at it with a um, Bollinger band, see if there's a Bollinger band breakout. So you can see there's a bit of compression through there, it's past its earnings, and it's broken up above its Bollinger band. And so what I do is I, I've got you know, the ability to have pre-market data turned on. You simply just go down here and you click extended hours. And so when the market opens tonight, if that's green, like if I start to get a green number, um, then I, you know, when I say tonight, you know, I'm, I'm in Australia, but you know, if in the morning or whenever the market opens for you, if that was green, then that's a stock that I might look at buying because, you know, it's, it looks like the, you know, direction is changing. It's building with a bit of momentum according to my MACD here, which is, um, you know, interesting. Let's have another look behind the U. So again, you know, it's crossed over. Um, it's, it's been in a long downturn, but you can see, you know, it, it has the ability to spike for, you know, whatever reason. So it's had a few good days. Again, if I just turn on some of my tools, I might go and say, well, click on that. So off the bottom, roughly, it's up, you know, it was up, 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 up 100% over those last couple of days. So that's crazy. And I might say, well, why? And I might click over here and see, is there any news? So it's IMVU announced another strong month of you know, September 21. So that's not, not recent news. November 10, 2.5 million in Bitcoin mining gross revenue. Best view reports, 2.5 million month. So that's not too bad. So they've you know, proven they've got the ability to mine Bitcoin. Um, so that's interesting. So if I go back here and say, what do they actually do? You know, you can look at this, um, you know, I've done a, um, another video on, you know, looking at these income statements. This is just a really cheap, easy way to say, well, you can see that their revenue is going up and they're actually, you know, net income is positive for the first time. So scroll down a bit more. I can see that, you know, the technicals are suggesting it might be a buy. If I click on that to understand more about it, I hope this pop-up displays. And all that there is just a summary of all these different oscillators and moving averages. So it's just trying to give you a little bit of a hint as to, you know, what the overall chart patterns are sort of saying on a daily chart, four hour chart, you can have a look at two hour chart, one hour chart, one week chart. Or, you know, when I say one week chart, you know, it's just basically looking at the sort of bigger picture pattern. So over a month, it's not doing particularly well, but on the daily charts, it's, you know, looking quite good. And so I can see engaged in the provision of financial products and services to individual investors and financial institutions, offers financial education, I click on Invest View, which will open up the um, uh, stocks website. So, in ecosystem, leading edge financial technologies, tools, research services that drive innovation, blockchain, AI, 
um, decentralized finance and global finance. So again, that looks kind of interesting. Reports $2.5 million a month in mining, world's first adaptive cryptocurrency. Um, you know, could be interesting. So that's just, as I said, just a, an interesting way where all of a sudden you can search the world for stocks that might be of interest. So what I'm going to do just for fun, I'm going to scroll down here and have a look. You know, so here's one on the ASX. You know, I've got no idea who these guys are. I haven't heard of them. Uh, one year. Yeah, it's a, it's a funny sort of looking, you know, it's 0 0.08, so it's too small for me, so I wouldn't be interested in that one. Um, this one's on one of the Chinese exchanges. So, um, again, looking at that, it's an interesting chart, one year. So, you know, it's up 281% over a year. You know, previously, um, it's been up, if I took that from there and had a look up here, previously it's been up, you know, 71% higher than what it was now. It's had a bit of a pullback, but it is past earnings. Um, what do they do? So mining, processing, selling, and trading with chromium, boron, copper, and lithium. So products include chromite oil, blah, 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 lithium salt. You know, so I wonder if they're you know, part of the um, electric vehicle battery industry. You know, copper products, lithium metals. Um, sometimes it'll have a website. You can see the website's blank in that particular case. Um, what's another one? Hong Kong Exchange is sometimes easy to trade. Very similar. Financials, you know, sort of okay-ish. Uh, investment holding company production of fluorine and silicon materials following segments click on the Dong Yong Chung website I don't know how to pronounce it Dong Yu Ken massively not badly English company news interim results interesting Shane, it's got flash I wonder if anyone still uses flash so, you know, I, I can't glean much out of this, but uh, let's go back here. What's another one? LSE, so London. Uh, just had a big funky gap up. Another one a bit all over the place. And so, again, these are just ones that are purely based on, you know, that MACD crossover where it's sort of indicating that bullish momentum might be coming back in. Yeah, you can start to flip through a bit quicker. So, you know, bicycle therapeutics, whatever that is, $60. Looks like it's about to cross. So you can see it's crossing here. Um, you know, a little bit flat. I'll scroll down. Revenue is terrible. Or net income, rather. Clinical stage. Okay, developing a novel class of medicine, which the company refers to as bicycles for diseases that are underserved. Existing therapeutics. Crazy name, bicycles. SSE. It's another Chinese one. Um, Tibet Summit Resources, Wholesale Distributors, um, Mining Processing of Metal Ore and Mineral Resources, Product Produced Sale of Zinc, Copper and Non-Ferrous Metals, Aussie Broadband, that's one I know a bit better. So again, you can see it's crossing over here, so it's, you know, it's a bit of a bullish signal. It's been flat across the top. So um, if I was to draw a let's say resistance area, just sort of crossing through as many points as I can. You can see that in theory it's had a bit of a breakout here. So it was up 7.3% today, 7.3%. I wonder if there was any news. Um, exclusive discussions with, that's October, so that's not recent enough. But, you know, could be interesting, could be worth exploring a bit more. So the point of the video, though, is, is mainly just to say that there's all of a sudden this ability to screen you know, however however you do it, you know, if you do MACD crossovers, if you do moving average crossovers, if you do Bollinger Band breakouts, you know, whatever it is, the style that you trade, instead of being limited to one domestic market and doing your screening for that one market, you can now literally screen the world. So, you know, again, North American Nickel, any news? You know, so cattle is one of the biggest battery manufacturers in the world. So Millennium Lithium deal. Um, September, so it's not current news, but again, that's one that I would probably, you know, have a bit of a sticky beak at. And if it goes up in the pre-market, you know, I might, um, I might have a have a look at it, a closer look at it. Anyway, that's um, enough time on that video, and I hope that was useful. But as I said, the main thing is, you know, realizing you can now scan multiple markets at once. Thank you as always for listening.